you know, people people don't think, okay, like uh, the area where you guys live is considered high desert. Okay, and this is this is an area where you would look at that land driving down the road and go, there is nothing out here. I mean, this place is, you know, there's nothing here. It's just a road going to a bunch of sand hills. But if you get off, if you could fly over the place and look at it, it's kind of like the moon because there's so many anomalies and different things that people don't see, and it'd be easy to hide something out there, very easy to hide. Yeah, it, I mean, there's a reason why the outlaws were out here. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, I had a guy, I, I worked with this guy, he worked with my dad, an American, and he was my welding partner in another aircraft shop that we worked at. And oh, oh, Rock, he's a great deer hunter. He's really a good, good rifle shot and a good hunter and stuff. Good Christian man. He's one of my best friends and he's a great guy. And Rocky, I used to tell him, I'd say, hey, it's just a matter of time. You're going to be out there and you're going to run into one. He goes, ah, Dave, he goes, come on, man. You know, he goes, <laughs> he gigged me about that. And I said, okay, you know, we kind of, kind of laugh about it. And then uh, here it's been, uh, I guess, yeah, it was after after I saw mine. I told him, I said, you, you're going to, he hunted down Tala, down by Tallahena, right down there by Hone is where he hunted where the, the famous encounter of the siege of Honeby happened. And uh, I know the guy that shot that Bigfoot, Mike Humphreys, I, I met him and talked to him. And, and uh, so I hunted there. I was in I was actually hunting in a deer camp down there with my dad on a place and some guys that we worked with from uh, a construction company. And they invited us to come down and go hunting with them. And we were in that camp hunting when Mike shot that thing. And so word traveled like prairie fire around there, you know, somebody shot a Bigfoot and there's all this controversy. Oh, looking at it. they shot a bear and they're just trying to get attention and all this stuff, you know, but it was a real thing. And, uh, when people live in those mountains and they haven't seen one and you're kind of scared of it or scared of that them stories, your mind wants to tell you it's not real. If you, if your mind can, if you can convince yourself it's not real, you don't have anything to be afraid of. And so they just, that's what a lot of them do. Yeah. But that's these things are them. walking around out there through the mountains and the woods all the time. They're out there. And if they want us to see them, We'll see them. If they don't, we probably won't. And we see them by accident sometimes. Like Catherine caught that big one. I mean, that's a rare deal that everybody wants to see. And she just got really lucky to see that one right then. She, she's a had a lot of those. I, I think some of it is, you know, spiritual discernment. I think God gives some people a spiritual discernment to see things that other people don't see. Um, I've run into that well, all my well, life. And that's what I had the same thing, you know, and, and I didn't know, I didn't know that's what it was when I was started seeing these things and started having to, but my mother told me, she goes, look, you're not like everybody else. She goes, we knew that there was something different about you when you were little, but we didn't want to tell you because we didn't want you to get, think you were, think you're better than everyone else. And of course I never think that I think I'm just, I think I'm not as good as a lot of people, but, uh, if I think what it is, is what you told me, if you have, first of all, to see things continuously like we're, we have seen them, you have to trust the Lord and know he's real and know that he's actually there and he is in control of everything. And if you trust him and you got his back, then when things happen, he's, he's going to let you see stuff so you can see what's making things go around. And answer a few questions. He has, he didn't give us every answer, but he gave us a lot of them. And yeah. a lot of people said, you know, I've had people walk up to me and goes, "Oh, well, you're full of it," because it says in the Bible he told us everything. I said, "No, he told you everything he wanted you to know at that time." Okay, not everything he knows. So right. there's uh, there's things that get little bits of information get let out here and get out here, there, and you know as well as I do, you probably had things happen. And then a little bell would go off in your head, go, aha, that's it. 
I knew that. Yeah, and sometimes you don't realize what it is until later, you know. Right. I, right. Sometimes, you know, God knows that you're not ready for something, and he'll kind of give you blinders, or he'll make it foggy for a while. And then later, whenever your brain is ready to deal with that situation, then he'll bring it to the forefront. And whenever you've got the right information available to you and, you know, that, that's just kind of how God works with things. He's not going to give us more than yeah. we can handle without him to help us along, you know. Well, you know, people, people would ask me, and of course I'm, I do a lot of digging. I think I have the answer to some of it, but people ask me, go, well, where do you think dog man come from? You know, I said, well, have you ever seen the movie, the 10 commandments? People, you would not, Donnie, you'd be surprised how many people don't know that film exists. I, I, I can't I, imagine. I work with people right now that don't know anything about that. They don't know anything about the Ten Commandments. They don't know anything about that. They know that film kind of exists, but I said, have you ever seen it? No. I said, well, why don't you sit down and watch it and see how the world started? See how everything, yeah. how everything went, you know? So yeah. they asked me, where'd Dog Man come from? I said, well, you, when you look in that movie and you see when Pharaoh and Nepotiri are sitting back there in the chamber and you see those black dogs with the long ears standing up back there behind them, that's Anubis is what that's called. They yep. had dog man back then and they, they worshiped it. Yep. So the Egyptians, they weren't on the side of the Lord. You know, they were, uh, they were on the, what do you call the dark arts, I guess. But uh, they, they didn't revere the Lord. Well, I think they really region. had them. I, I think they really had them. I think that's what they, yeah, were that's, really, why they that's why they really had them in there. Yeah. Uh, I've been told that people know more about this than I do. That said that the, they made those idols of things that were of what they saw. So yeah, yeah, they I think they were fandoms. They, this right. were this was either, and, and of course, I think a lot of the stuff in Egypt, especially the big stuff in Egypt, yeah. was there before the flood, and they just found right. it after the you know after the ark and after the the Tower of Babel. So. You know, I yeah, I think a lot of it was watchers that had come down, um, that they were that they were showing. Of course, we've got the Sphinx, you know, and hard to say what that is. Well, but, you know, people nowadays they've even said they've seen uh, people have said they've seen pterodactyls flying in the sky. You know, oh, definitely, like that, and dragons. And other things across the world, you know, we're not, I mean, we're not the only people to see this stuff. There's a lot of other people see it. But think about how many people see things, but they don't say anything or report it. Right. They, they, they stay quiet because they think, oh, man, they'll think I'm a wacko. Or, I mean, I had, I had, now this is the truth. <laughs> I had a guy tell me at work, you know, they was wanting to promote somebody over there to do it into a department. And, uh. I was a prime candidate for it. I was smarter than anybody else on this subject and knew how to do it better than anybody else. But they wouldn't go let me do it. And I said, well, why do you, Why would they do that? They go, you think they're going to let somebody do that that actually believes in Bigfoot? I said, well, that's on them, not me. But there's a lot of guys that I work with that have come to me since they knew I've seen this thing and told me, hey, Dave, I was hunting and I saw this. Uh, I had a kid the other day, his dad and me are friends, and we taught him to well over there. And he said when he was a, a boy, him and his sister were walking down a trail, at, I think it's at their house or their grandmother's, and walked right into two of these at 10, 15 yards away that were 10 foot tall. And they're little kids. And I said, what'd you do? He said, oh, we, we just stood there and froze and looked at them. We were scared. But said they just turned and walked off. So how many people are out there like that? That have seen something. There's new, new, yeah. numerous reports of people camping uh, in campgrounds and different things that have seen stuff, you know. And people say they go out to at night in the country time to do something and they see one. And uh, these things are out there. They've been out there for a long time. But you and I talked about that. Uh, 
I got into a conversation with some guys and they said, well, how come just now in this time, in this realm in time, are we seeing so many, there's so many reports, uh, the internet's exploded with information about them. There's so many sightings and all these agencies that look for them and different things like that. I said, well, back and I had to do research to find this out myself, but back, back, uh, in the 1800s, when the cowboys were here and the, the tribes were all over Oklahoma, Oklahoma reservation, that's all it is. It's like Arizona. And, uh, every, every native American tribe out there has a name for these things. They all have a name for Bigfoot. They all know what it is. They've all encountered it. And they've been around since probably what you said, since the flood. You know, they've been part of the giants. They've been here. So uh, during the 1800s, when the white man comes on, uh, you know, he's moving west to to open up the western United States, they uh, they were finding giant skeletons on the prairie of the giants. And that's one of the things, they. that's why they wanted to get the railroad to go from east to west so fast. The Smithsonian was trying to get these things off the prairie because the settlers were, gonna, were finding them. And they didn't want them questioning all this stuff, you know. And the Smithsonian is full of, full of these bones. I mean, they've just, they've stockpiled them, you know. And I thoroughly believe what you said, that probably out in there and all through the Western United States, they're buried here and there, you know. And it's just a matter of time till the brain or something uncovers them or whatever, you know. They've been digging for shopping malls. They was digging up here in Missouri and, and found a set of skeletons up there. They had to stop. And they excavated them, excavated them and, and took them to the Smithsonian. Yeah, but, yeah, we know the how, Smithsonian. Got a bunch of stuff that they're but they're but, they're, but what I'm getting at is back we you know, we talked about this okay back during and this is a bad thing to talk about but it is what it is so we got to talk about it the the white man wanted to take the land away from the Indians okay and instead of you know we weren't involved in it but the people that did this instead of coming in here and saying hey you know uh, we kind of live here and we'd like to be your friend and could you show us how to do things and, and we'll share the land with you and work with you and be friends and, and uh, get along and do all this stuff. No, they want to just come in and take everything. They want to be a top dog, uh, get rid of those people and we'll just take what you got. And that's what happened. So they wanted to do away with the American Indian, get them off the prairie, get them off the plains. And that's that's what the big drive was to get done. That's why the railroad had to go west. They wanted to shoot out all the buffalo, and they wanted to get the Indians off that off the land so they so the white man could move west and take it. Well, the five civilized tribes. That's why they moved them. So during this time, when the white man first first came into into existence with the Indian. The Indians didn't have these diseases and stuff. They didn't have all the, you know, what, uh, I guess what my doctor, you know, me and Laren talked about this, uh, whooping cough and smallpox and diphtheria and all these different bad diseases that the white man brought over here. The Indians didn't have those. Okay, well, when they infected, what they did, they even infected blankets with smallpox to try to kill off the Indians to get them out of the way because we weren't getting rid of them fast enough so they could get, get them off the land and get their property. So the Bigfoot was in intermingled with the Indian tribes. They were all around then. There's a lot of them. Well, they were accessible to these diseases too, and they caught the same thing, and it killed their numbers way back. So jump forward, and the white man starts curing diseases. We cure all these different uh, uh, bad things that kill people and ha and happen to different people, and we have medicine for it, 
and we killed out those diseases. And once the disease was gone, they started breeding their numbers back in again. And that's why there's so many of them now, because they don't have any, they don't have any opposing force against them really, except for the government coming in and shooting them out. If they, if they see one that's making trouble and doing problems and that's why they're everywhere. You know, you hear of them. I've, I've heard of them walking into town in Sulphur, Oklahoma, going in and eating out of the dumpsters. Yeah. And, uh, I saw somebody on TikTok yesterday that was talking about um, somebody was had just bought a house and they were working on the house, getting ready to move in in a, in a use uh walked into the house while they were upstairs scared the dickens out of them of course um but it didn't they didn't i guess they didn't notice him i can't imagine them not noticing them but they probably just ignored that they were there you know and were looking around the house probably looking for snacks you know they were uh, in the house. yeah yeah and i don't know oh, where it wow. was I don't remember where it was, but they walked into the house. Uh, the The woman and her daughter were upstairs and and they could see downstairs and they just, you know, stayed really, really quiet. And they watched them. You know, they're like somebody's in the somebody came in the house, you know, yeah. um, and they were expecting it to be people or maybe, you know, some critters or something. But, yeah, it was a big foot, a big one and a small one. And. I'm like, okay, interesting. And of course, a lot of the stories that you'll get, they'll be like, you know, this person told this person told this person. So it's hard to get like eyewitness sightings sometimes. Um, there is a a podcast here in Oklahoma that they specifically talk to people who have had their own experiences. And they do what I can't remember what that podcast is called. I'll put a link in the description. The Bigfoot Society. There's another one. There's another one. I'll make sure there's, there's a link. There's about four or five. There's uh oh, the Bigfoot Society. There's uh I can't remember all of them. There's so many of them. You know, Lance yeah. talked to a lot of those people. Yeah. But but there was a place talking about being in houses, there was a place we went with this guy. And uh, he was on Sasquatch Chronicles, and uh, I talked to him. And so he was actually in Colorado, but he moved here in Oklahoma. And uh, I didn't know what this place was at first. and But I couldn't put two and two together. So me and Lance, we get together, and we go with him. And we're driving around, and we're going to this place. I call it Purgatory. And it's supposed to be Bigfoot Central is here in Oklahoma. And we heard about it. Uh, another guy that I know, Kumbo Baker, he talked about that extensively. And this place is is uh, pretty wild looking. It's down into a kind of a holler and around these hills and stuff. And so uh, I'm driving around with these guys, and we go around this corner, and I get, have you ever had that feeling, hey, I've been right here. You know, you said, you tell yourself, I've been right here. I know where we're at. And all of a sudden that happened to me. And I'd hunted this ground right across the road from this place and didn't know that was there because the guy that I was hunting with, his mother owned it. So, you know, we were deer hunting the spot. We're staying the night over there and stuff and nothing ever happened. But I'm going, that gun, let's feel it. Dave's mom owned is right there. You know, I'm looking across the fence at it. We go down into this place, Donita, and there's houses in here that are abandoned, and these Bigfoot have been living in them. And you could tell, you could tell with it, like I, I went into one, and uh, so we go in there, and this guy asked me, he said, hey, you got your gun ready to go? I said, well, I've always got my gun ready to go. <laughs> he goes, okay. He goes, uh, well, don't shoot at anything unless it tries to jump us. I said, if it, <laughs> I said, there'll be bullets in the air long before that. <laughs> I said, <laughs> you know, what are we getting ourselves into here? He goes, well, he said, just keep your eyes open. So we go in this house. And as soon as we walked in there, you could tell the smell. The smell was terrible. 
and uh, we go out into this garage area. They had dug the concrete up where the garage used to be, and there was a big hole in the floor, and these things were sleeping in there. And that's you could tell where they were, you know, they'd knock the windows out of the house and everything else. And so all these people around there are living with these things. And I got to looking uh, on the side of the road and how, like, the, you know how a cow trail is? Like you see a cow trail, cows, they'll walk the same trail. The lead cow, will, she'll take all the other cows, you know, and the cow and the trail will only be so wide. We found trails in there that were like three foot wide and the ground was flat is smashed down where something very heavy had had walked on that ground. It was hard surface, but it was just packed down. And it's 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 a trail where these things had walked. So the guy with me goes, How do you know that is what it is? I said, Okay, now look above you. And we're looking above us where the limbs in the trees are, and all the limbs are rubbed off the trees. All the tr all the leaves are gone. The limbs are worn slick because of these things walking through there. They're that tall. They're taking everything off of the limbs as they go by. And I said, this is what they were talking about. And we actually saw, we didn't get to see it for just a second. We saw one jump from one tree to the next. But they're in there thick and those, I noticed all those people around there had high fences around their place and stuff they probably can't afford to move you know and uh, but, but what I hear they're thick in there and this kid that owned the place he actually ended up taking his own life and I don't know why he did because Dave was a he was a good Christian guy he's always been a man of the Lord since I met him and something scared him very badly and he didn't want to deal with it no more. He wouldn't tell me what it was, but I think that he knew these things were on his mom's property now. And it's just, he couldn't hunt there anymore because of them. You know, he went to Alaska and he saw something up there that scared him and he wouldn't ever tell me what it was. But when he came back, he, he was gone a couple of weeks later. I had a knee surgery and it, it affected me pretty bad because he was a good friend of mine, you know, and, we talked about this some, but he really didn't believe in it. I think once he found out they were real, it scared him to death. Because David wanted to hunt. He had more tree stands than anybody I ever knew. I mean, he, he had tree stands everywhere. <laughs> he was a big time bow hunter and stuff. And he loved to hunt, but it 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 took his it took his livelihood away. And I think that's what it was. And I think I, that's I part of the reason it's so I important again. to understand where they're coming from, you know. To, to understand the Bible aspect of it. So many people in the church don't understand the spiritual things of the oh. Bible. They believe in angels, but they don't believe in anything else. And well, there's, there's I, like Paul and me were talking, you know, I told him, I said, I'm telling you right now that if you and I went to a church somewhere and got up there and started to tell them about this stuff, what's going on and how things really are. Hey, Julie. Help me my pop, please. Uh, they would there would be two guys back there on the back pew tying up a couple of ropes to swing us from the tree out there, you know, because they don't want to hear this. They, they don't want to hear that there's they don't want to hear things like this because that's just like preachers right now that won't talk about the end times, that won't teach revelations. Uh a lot of uh John uh, John Rich, you know who he is, the country singer. He's uh, a real good Christian guy. He was talking about this with Tucker Carlson, some of the things that go on. And people, these preachers, uh, Jimmy Evans, he's another preacher that talked about it. These preachers that won't teach about this, they don't want to do that because if they do, it'll scare their congregation and, and the offering plate will dwindle on Sunday morning, you know. Uh, people don't want to hear to be told that there's actually monsters in the in the world out here. They're out there in the countryside. And they might get you. You know that they're uh, when you go camping, you actually got to be aware of what's going on in your surroundings. Everybody wants to go to the lake and drink beer and have a good time and party down and all this kind of stuff. Well, uh, that ain't all there is to life. There's another side of it and. 
all this stuff that's happening now, you need to be paying attention to what's going on. And if your preacher is not teaching you that, then you're not getting what the Lord wants you to have. You might have a hard time getting in when it time comes because you're not understanding. You're not getting what, what's really there. Any, I think any preacher today that's not teaching revelations and showing the congregation uh, in the end times what, what Jesus is getting ready to do and some of the things he's going to do, those people are going to suffer tremendously because yeah. they choose to close well, their eyes to that. They're either also. not teaching about it or they're teaching that you don't need to worry about it because the rapture is going to come get you. So you don't need to worry about any of this kind of stuff because you're going to be raptured up. And so none of it's going to bother you. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. Well, they don't, whoa. they don't realize. Yeah, they don't realize. Uh, for instance, there was a girl. Uh, I heard this story. Another guy was telling it to me, and I found it on the Internet. She was a, can a park ranger in the... I think it was California and she had to, she was trying to get some kind of a pay raise and she was going to, she had to, she had to do this thing by herself to prove that she could handle herself on her own and everything. So she had to go out and spend the night at a campsite, make a camp, spend the night by herself and write down all the things she did. And then her friend would pick her up the next day and then she bring it all into the boss or whatever, and then it proves that she could do all this stuff, and they would give her her next level of assignment for being a park ranger, and she'd get a pay raise. So the girl says she did it. Her friend dropped her off, and she said, come get me in the morning. She goes, I'll be down here at 9 o'clock. Come pick me up. So, okay, so the girl goes, and she walks off through the mountains there, and she has a campsite, and I guess she knows where she's at. And she said she was making her camp and she got a fire going, put up her tent and all this stuff. And she was doing things there that, that park rangers do, I guess. And she said all of a sudden she had this terrible feeling of dread. Just come over her immediately. And she just, it just come like a rush over a wave. You know, she goes, oh my Lord, what is this? She's looking around. She can't see anything. She And she said she turned and looked over her shoulder and about 75 five yards behind her standing in the trail was two big foot and she goes they were nine or ten foot tall monster she said she just she said she did she almost had a heart attack she said my heart was beating so fast i couldn't breathe she goes uh she goes, i knew they was going to kill me i knew it was going to get me she said immediately the only thing i know to do she goes i dropped down on my knees and started praying, and I remember what my grandmother always told me, if you're ever in trouble, start praying and ask Jesus to take it away right now in his name to get it, to get out of here. You can't stay here in Jesus' name. So she said she did that. She started praying. She said, Jesus, I need you to help me right now. Please come. Please come. Please come and help me. And so she said she opened her eyes, and these Bigfoot turned and walked away. So. Yeah. That's why it's so important to put on the armor of God every single day. You know, they're, and they're, I've taught. Are the, they're, yeah, like I've taught my family the, to pray a bubble of protection around yeah, them. You know, and Catherine's had uh, people bounce off of her bubble before. <laughs> Actually bounce off of it, you know, because they they had demonic, you know, influence around well, them. These guys, these guys will. They tell that I've had people tell the guys that really believe in it, you know, they'll, and there's a lot, lot more people that are getting on board with this. I've had guys say, man, aren't you scared when you're out there by yourself? Don't you get worried? I said, no. Well, yeah. Cause you got a big gun. I said, well, yeah, I got a big gun, but I also got the biggest gun I got is my brother with me. I said, I got Jesus there with me. I don't have to worry about that. I said, cause if things get too bad, all I got to say is I'll, I'll tell them right to their face. Hey, you better get gone right now in the name of my brother's name, Jesus, get out of here right now. It's over. Mm -hmm. You can't stay here, you know, and they got to go because they, they, these things are, they weren't on the ark. They didn't, they didn't have a seat on the ark and, and Noah walked down see they're bringing them a bushel of bananas when they was in there. It was a, <laughs> this is a, these things were, 
these things are part of the giants, and that's what that's why God flooded the earth to get rid of these things. But right. like you said in the Bible, it says there were giants in those days and the days after that. So some of them survived. 